In this video, we will study about the loop analysis of DC networks. A DC network is an interconnected network. In this networks, we will have resistors, voltage sources are all connected to form loops. In a DC network, resistor R Voltage source V, these are the main elements. Now the resistor R1, what I have written here on the board, will have two terminals A and B. The voltage source also have two terminals C and D. Now any element with two terminals in a network is called as a branch. I can interconnect this voltage source and resistor to form a single two terminal element. So therefore, this series connection of voltage source and resistor is called a branch. Now in a DC network, we can have good number of resistors connected together to form the network. Now for example, I complete this network what I have drawn by adding few more resistors and a num one more voltage source like this. Let us call the voltage source as V1 here and this voltage source as V2. Resistors, we call them to be R2 and R3. Now each element here will be a two terminal element like I have here BE, a resistor, EF, a voltage source, BG, we have another resistor. Three resistors and two voltage sources are forming an electrical network here. We can apply Kirchhoff's voltage law and develop loop equations for the network for analyzing the network. You consider this network. Let us learn to write down the Kirchhoff's voltage law equations for this network. Now this network is formed by connecting three resistors and two voltage sources as you can see on the diagram. Now in this circuit between terminals A and B we have a resistor R1, between B and C we have a resistor R3, between B and F we have a resistor R2, between C and E we have a voltage source V2 and between A and D we have a voltage source of V1. If you consider this part of the network, here I am connecting one terminal of the voltage source and the resistor together to form a simple node at A. Similarly, in this part of the circuit, the one terminal of resistor R3 and the positive terminal of voltage source V2 are connected to form the node C. Now this node A and node C, we call them as simple nodes because only two elements are meeting to form this junction. Now the node B, it is formed by three resistors R1, R2 and R3. Therefore, this junction B can be called a principal node. Similarly, node F is also a principal node because it is formed by inter interconnecting two voltage sources and the resistor R2. Now, in this network, voltage sources V1 and V2, these energize the network. That means they supply the current to the resistors of the network. If I consider that the current given by the voltage source V1 is I1 in this direction, after flowing through the resistance R1, the current I1 will be coming to this junction B. Now similarly, the voltage source V2 may give a current of I2 into the network. So this current I2, after flowing to the point C, it enters the resistor R3 and it will come out of the resistor R3. Now at this junction, these two currents I1 and I2 add together will flow as a current I3 in the resistor R2. The current what is coming at the junction F has to divide again into two branch currents I1 into the voltage source V1 and I2 into the voltage source V2. Thus 
if we apply Kirchhoff's current law at this junction B, we have the currents which are coming into the junction I1 and I2 add up together flowing into the resistor R3. Therefore, the Kirchhoff's current law at the junction B will give you an equation I1 plus I2 is equal to I3. This is one equation. Let us consider this network. Now here, if I move from terminal A to B, B to F, F to D, D to A, it says that we are moved in a closed path. You can start moving from here, A to B, B to F, F to D, D back to A. So we are starting at point A and after moving through all the terminals, we are coming back to B. So this, therefore, we are moving in a closed path. In this path, I, I have the voltage drop across the resistor R1 will be V1. This is equals to, let us write this as VR1. This is equals to I1 R1. I can give a polarity for these voltage drops plus here minus here. So because the current I1 is entering into the resistor at this terminal, therefore I mark it as a positive one. The current leaving R1 at this terminal, therefore I marked it as a negative. So this becomes a potential drop. Similarly, in the resistor R3, I can mark the potential points plus and minus, okay, indicating the sign of the voltage drop across the resistor R2. If I write down the loop A, B, F, D, A. For this loop, I can collect all the voltage drops on one side and all the voltage rises on the other side to get a Kirchhoff's voltage law equation. So when I move in this network from A to B, I have a potential drop VR1. Therefore, I can write down VR1 and in the resistor R2, when I move from B to F, I have a voltage drop. I can write it as VR2, where VR2 will be equal to product of current I3 and resistance R2. And from the branch F to D, I have no resistance. Therefore, there won't be any voltage drop. When it comes to voltage source, I am moving from point D towards point A. I am moving from a lower potential point to a higher potential point. Therefore, this voltage of the source, what you have, it becomes a potential rise. I get this as the equation for Kirchhoff's voltage law applicable to this loop ABFDA. In this, if I substitute the values of VR1 and VR2 in terms of current and resistances, I get an equation I1 R1 plus I3 R2 is equals to V1. In the second loop, I can move from B to C, C to E, E to F, F to B, B back to C. Now in this loop, we have the resistors R2 and R3 energized by the voltage source V2. Now, if I give the polarity for the voltage drops across the resistors, when I am moving from B to C, for the given current I2, which is flowing from C towards B, C will be higher potential point and B will be a lower potential point. Now the polarity of the voltage drop in resistor R2 remains same as the mark here. Now if I move from B to C through the resistor R3, I am moving against the current direction because the current is flowing from C to B, my movement is from B towards C. Therefore, in the resistor R3, I, had, I am moving from low, negative terminal towards the positive terminal or I am moving from a lower potential point 
to higher potential point therefore this becomes a potential rise now if i apply kirchhoff's voltage law for this second loop this being a potential rise i can write that as i2 r3 this is a potential rise and between c and d i have a voltage drop as i am moving from higher potential to lower potential point therefore by putting an equal to sign here i can write down the potential drop v2 so one side i am writing the drops on the other side i am writing the rises between e and f i have no voltage drop coming to point f towards b i am moving through a resistance r2 or i can say i am moving from a lower potential point to a higher potential point therefore this will give you a voltage rise so therefore we have that voltage rise can be written as i3 multiplied by r2 this is what we have the voltage equation for the second loop now once you follow these equations we can see there is a equal to sign between two voltages now in the first loop v1 is becoming a potential rise i1 r1 and i3 r2 these are the drops whereas in the second equation i have as per the moment v2 is a potential drop i2 r3 and i3 r2 these are the potential rises now the unknowns are i1 i2 and i3 there are three unknowns here but we have only two equations so to solve the three unknowns we need one more equation that equation can be obtained by applying kirchhoff's current law at this junction b as per the current law we have this equation i1 plus i2 is equal to i3 so in the equation for 1 and 2 what we have the kirchhoff's voltage law equation i am using kirchhoff's current law equation also to solve the network solving the network means finding out the currents i1 i2 and i3 once i know these currents i can calculate the voltage drop across the resistors and also i can cal calculate the power developed in different resistors i can also calculate how much the power the voltage sources are giving to the network this is what you have the kirchhoff's voltage law and applying kirchhoff's voltage law developing the mathematical equations in terms of the currents i1 i2 and i3 if you see this diagram i mark the current i1 as the current flowing through the resistance r1 i2 the current through the resistance r2 i3 r3 sorry the current i3 it is through resistor r2 now these are currents what we call them as branch currents we can also develop this kirchhoff's voltage law equations in terms of loop currents